a thread by Carlos Osuida for Alice 72850 based on this tweet by Hassan Hassan. Hassan tweets, a US strike kills a notable Al Qaeda leader in Syria, a video of the car he was in, modern weapons. Now what's important about this video is that the strike on the vehicle is extremely targeted, killing only one passenger and leaving the other passengers unharmed. That's the important part of this that, that you need to understand. Carlos continues, you asked if I know what kind of weapon was used. Nobody does. There's a lot of misinformation, disinformation about a ninja bomb with swords. From businessinsider.com, the U.S. is suspected of killing a terrorist in Syria with the ninja bomb. It's called the RX-9 Hellfire, or Flying Ginsu, based on the old commercials for Ginsu knives. Absolutely ridiculous. Such a weapon would kill everyone in the car. The munition being used is a purely kinetic weapon with no explosive warhead. The warhead is almost certainly cement. Inert training munitions are filled with cement. Here's a quick video of that. Inert training munitions. Each of these munitions weighs about 2,000 pounds. Look how little explosive action takes place upon impact. Okay. In 1982, the Israelis pioneered the use of dropping inert cement-filled munitions in urban environments. The PLO locked all of the residents of apartment buildings inside and then put anti-aircraft positions on the roofs. The Israelis brought back a very old tap tactic called skip bombing. Instead of dropping the bomb to hit vertically, you fly in from the side and drop the bomb so that it skips horizontally. So check this out. right after this ad for the Epic Times. Okay, skip bombing, 39 second video. Okay. Get ready to see some skip bombing. Bam, that's your skip bombing. And of course, hello. All right, you get the idea on skip bombing. Okay. It's incredibly hard to do on hard surfaces such as the roofs of buildings because there's always the danger that the bomb will bounce up too high and hit the aircraft. In Beirut, the Israelis came in flying jets about five feet above the gun positions, dropped the 2000 pound bomb and pulled up and away. The bomb smashed into the gun position without destroying the roof of the apartment building. The Israelis even worked out how to make the bomb skip in directions where it would cause no collateral damage. We're using guided cement bombs that kill only the target in the car. This car was stationary when it was hit. It was idling. The first munition hit vertically. went all the way through the car and made a shallow crater in the pavement. They used some form of compressed dust, metal or plastic for the casing that causes the munition to completely disappear as it hits. The Israelis pioneered the use of compressed sand bullets that are fired from standard guns. It was then a short step to making compressed, compressed metal bullets that kill but cause zero collateral damage. The bullets become dust in the wind. That guy fired full auto at a steer. Here we go. All right, check, it, check this out. The polyfrange bullet, really does the polyfrange bullet it disintegrates on impact. So let's watch.
Okay. No danger of ricochet ricochets. Okay. That guy fired full auto at a steel target at point blank, blank range. The compressed metal or plastic casing of the unknown munition works the same way. It looks like the cement warhead is also made of compressed material because no trace has ever been found. This car was hit by a second munition through the windshield almost certainly after nanodrones saw that the target was still moving. I've seen several of these weapons used, but never TWO. Oh, sorry, never, never two. They're using a new targeting system. In the past, our most accurate precision guided weapon would be anywhere within a circle six feet in diameter Beginning in Iraq, munitions were put into open windows of cars. To clarify, Iraq after 2014. I'm positive that since these strikes were always referred to as coalition rather than American, they were Gulf Arab technology. The Gulf Cooperation Council, GCC, secretly made peace with Israel in 2006. Then the GCC began funding Israeli weapon development to the tune of about $7 trillion. Both the Israelis and the GCC have weapons we can't even conceive of. After Trump became president, they began sharing the technology with us. They trust Trump. The commonality of the new weapons is accuracy, lethality, zero collateral damage, kinetic energy, and directed blast effect. The car in Hassan's video has no sign of either blast or fragmentation. It was a purely kinetic weapon. I think the targeting system uses disposable nanodromes with transmitters. They're the size of insects. They land on the target and then the munition hits the drone. I think they use frequency hopping spread spectrum radio transmission. This is a completely unknown missile used in Syria. It has no flying surfaces, wings or elevators, no visible means of propulsion, and a radio antenna, which is where the red arrow is pointing. If you change the radio frequency millions of times per second, the missile can't be jammed. Weapons are decades more advanced than bombs with swords. The U.S. Special Forces Command announced that they're replacing all their weapons platforms with much more advanced systems to bring us up to par with someone. I didn't say who, but I know. The Gulf Arabs. After Israel, Saudi Arabia is the most unfairly maligned country on earth. It's been fighting an internal civil war over religion for 41 years. The reformers finally won but they didn't have a victory parade. Secret revolutions are smart revolutions. And Israelis and Saudis are our best allies. We owe them a hell of a lot.